What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to factor an algebraic expression, all right? And we're gonna do this using the greatest common factor, okay? So basically factoring is just the distributive property, but in reverse, okay? So let me give you an example real quick. So if you remember how the distributive property works, you'll normally have something inside a set of parentheses and then something sitting outside here, right? And then in order to distribute, all you do is take whatever's out here and multiply it by the inside, right? You multiply it by this first term and then you multiply it by this second term. Okay, so multiplying these first terms, three times x, that's equal to three x, right? And then over here, three times four is equal to 12. Okay, and then since you're adding right here, you just bring that straight down, okay? So then your answer right here, if you were distributing, would be three x plus 12. But what if you started with this part, the 3x plus 12 part, 3x plus 12, and you wanted to get back to this original part right here? What if you wanted to work backwards to get back to that? How would you do that? Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call factoring. Okay, so how do you factor? Well, in order to factor, you need to know what the greatest common factor is between your two terms. Okay, so all you have to figure out is what is the biggest number or term or expression that fits evenly into these two terms right here, 3x and 12. Or the other way you could think about it is what is the biggest number or term that divides evenly into both of these? Well, that would be three, right? Three divides evenly, evenly into 3x and three divides evenly into 12. So if we pulled out a three right here and we drew a set of parentheses, and now we can simplify some stuff, right? So here we have three X divided by three, and that's equal to just X, right? Because these threes cancel out, so we're just left with X right there. And then here, 12 divided by three, that's equal to four, right? And then we have this plus sign right here, so you just bring that straight down. So then when you factor it, your answer right here is X plus four in parentheses, and then it's multiplied by this three out here. So as you can see, we got back exactly to where we started from. Okay, so the key to factoring literally lies right here. Figuring out what number, what term divides evenly into both of these, okay? And in this case, we saw that it was a three, right? Three divided evenly into both of them. So you just pull it out and then you simplify each of these little fractions right here, okay? So hopefully that wasn't too bad. Let's run through some examples really quick. Let's start with this first one up here. So 5x plus 40. Now, another way you can think about factoring is just thinking about what's the biggest number you can pull out or the biggest term that you can pull out from each of these that they have in common, okay? So for example, we can pull out a five from this side, right? And we can also pull out a five from this side, okay? So we're gonna basically divide both sides by five. So if we're pulling out a five, you're just going to bring that out, literally, okay? And then you're going to write your parentheses here and then simplify each of these fractions. So 5x divided by 5, well, we have a 5 on top and on the bottom, so those cancel out, right? So then we just have an x on top right there. And then here we have 40 divided by 5, which is equal to 8, okay? And then since you're adding right here, you just bring that plus sign straight down there, okay? So this would be your factored answer. So x plus 8 in parentheses, times this five out here. And if you ever wanna to check to make sure you got the right answer or you wanna check your answer, all you have to do is distribute your answer, okay? And when you distribute it, you should wind up back to where you started from. So if this is your factored answer, you wanna check it, let's distribute. We'll take this five and multiply it by this first term. So five times X is equal to five X, right? And then multiply it by the second term. So five times eight is equal to 40. And then again, since you're adding right here, you just bring that straight down, okay? So then you can see we got back to where we started from, right? 5x plus 40. So we know this answer right here, our factored answer, was correct. All right, let's go to the next one. So here we have 4a squared plus 20a. Okay, so again, what's the biggest number or term that we can pull out from both of these right here? Well, first of all, starting with the numbers, we can pull out a four, from this side, and we can also pull out a four from this side, right? That's the biggest number we can pull out from both of these. 
But that is not the only thing we, we can pull out, right? Because we also have these a terms in common, right? We have one a over here, right? This is basically a to the first power, right? So we have one a over here and we have two a's over here, right? So that means we can pull out at least one a from both sides, right? We can pull out an a from this side and we can also pull out an a from this side, okay? So then in this case, the biggest thing you, you can divide out or your greatest common factor would be 4a. Okay, so then you pull that out. So there's your 4a, and then you write your parentheses. Okay, and then you just simplify each of these little fractions right here. So 4a squared divided by 4a, what is that equal to? Well, these fours, they cancel out, right? So we're left with a squared over a. And how do you reduce that? Well, if you remember, whenever you're dividing exponents, and they have the same base, all you do is subtract them, okay? So since we just have a single a down here, this is basically a to the first power, right? So we have a squared divided by a to the first power. Okay, so then all you have to do is subtract your exponents. And you always start with the one on the top, okay? So you would do two minus the bottom, which is one, right? So then two minus one is just one. So then here we would have a to the first power. a to the first power, or just a. Right, And then here we have 20a divided by 4a, right? So 20 divided by four, that's equal to five. And then we have a single a on top and on the bottom, so those just cancel each other out. And then lastly, since we're adding right here, you just bring that straight down. Okay, and then this would be your answer. So a plus five in parentheses times 4a out here. Now let's go to this next one. So as you can see, this one has three terms, right? So 6n squared plus 42n minus 12. Okay, so what's the biggest number or term that we can divide evenly or pull out of all these three? Well, that would just be the number six, right? We can pull out a six from each of these, right? There's nothing else we can pull out, okay? And just in case you might be wondering, why can't we also pull out an n? Out of all these well because this last term right here the 12 doesn't have an n on it right there's no n right here to pull out it's just 12 okay so if you're gonna pull something out from one of them you have to pull it out on all of them okay so since we can't pull an n out of the 12 over here that means we cannot pull an n out of any of the terms all we can do is pull out a 6 so we'll pull that 6 out and then draw our parentheses. Now, simplifying each of these, uh, 6n squared divided by 6, well, these 6s just cancel out, right? So then we're just left with n squared. And then plus, right, plus uh, 42n divided by 6. 42 divided by 6, that's equal to 7. And then we still have this n up here, right? And then here we have negative 12 divided by 6, which is equal to negative 2, okay? So then this would be your simplified answer. So n squared plus 7n minus 2 in parentheses times this 6 out here. All right, just a few more here. So here we have 7t cubed minus 28t squared. All right, so what's the biggest number or term that we can pull out of both of these right here? Well, we can pull out a 7, right? 7 is the biggest number that divides evenly into 7 and 28. And then how many t's can we pull out? Well, here we have three t's, here we have two t's, so that means we can pull out two t's from each side, right? So we'll pull, pull out two t's on this side and two t's on this side. Okay, so seven t squared is the biggest factor that we can pull out, right, seven t squared. So then we'll draw our parentheses and then simplify each of these. So starting right here, this seven and this seven, they just cancel each other out. So remember, in order to divide these, all you have to do is subtract them, right? And you always start with the one on top first. So you, you would do three minus two, right? Because we have a two on the bottom. So three minus two is just one. So we would just have t to the first power, or in other words, just t, right? Or again, the other way you could think about it is I have three t's on top, I have two t's on the bottom. These two t's are gonna cancel out with two of the t's on top. So I'll just have one left over. Okay, now uh, coming to this last little fraction right here, we have negative 28 divided by seven, and that's equal to negative four, right? And then we have a t squared on top and on the bottom, so those just cancel out, okay? 
So then your final answer right here would be t minus 4 in parentheses times 7t squared out there. All right, last problem here. So here we have negative 9b to the fifth minus 63b cubed. All right, so what is the biggest number that we can pull out of these two terms right here? Well, we can pull out a 9, right, because 9 divides evenly into both of these numbers. But not just a 9, we can actually take out a negative 9, right? Because negative 9 divides evenly into negative 9, and negative 9 divides evenly into negative 63. Okay, so that's why we're going to make these negative. Okay, and now how many B terms can I pull out? Well, here I have 3 Bs, here I have 5 Bs, so that means I can pull out at least 3 Bs on each side, right? So I'm going to pull out 3 Bs on this side, and I'm also going to pull out 3 Bs on this side. So b cubed. Okay, so we found our biggest factor that we can take out, right? Negative 9b cubed. Negative 9b cubed. Then we'll draw our parentheses and then simplify these. So negative 9 and negative 9, those cancel out. Here we have b to the fifth divided by b cubed. So again, in order to divide these, you just have to subtract them, right? Starting with the top one. So we would do 5 minus 3, since we have a 3 right there. And then 5 minus 3 is equal to 2, right? So we're going to have b to the second power right here. b to the second power. Okay, now coming to this next fraction right here, we have negative 63 divided by negative 9, right? And that's equal to positive 7. Positive 7, right? A negative divided by a negative is a positive, and then 63 divided by 9 is 7. And then here we have a b cubed on top and on the bottom, so those just cancel each other out, okay? So then your simplified answer right here would be b squared plus 7 in parentheses times negative 9b cubed outside. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful, so definitely check those out, and I'll see you there.